All right, so it's heat of the summer. Every, uh, it's hot as hell out here, but for us hunters, we're thinking about the upcoming hunting season this fall, right? Our guys are out, they're hanging tree stands, they're reconning farms, they're buying the latest uh, scent lock stuff, they're putting up trail cameras, they're zeroing their rifles with the latest ammo. But most hunters consider a shot over 200 meters inhumane. What if I could tell you, well, what about if you could be an effective hunter at t over twice that distance? Hunt like a sniper, right? Now, sniper is the mastery of precision shooting and field craft. Sounds like hunting, right? Why? Because it is hunting. It's just hunting humans, right? So what I want to do is make you a better at hunting four-legged mammals. So I want you to learn from some of the tips that we've learned while hunting two-legged mammals. So uh, we're going to start with mastery of the rifle. All right, guys, first, right off the bat, I want to thank Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring this whole series of hunting videos. Uh, they've hooked us up with a lot of great hunting equipment, uh, every, anything that you guys could possibly need for hunting, you can get in Sportsman's Guide. Hey, first and foremost, you've got to master your gun. And I could talk about best gun, best optics all day long. This right here, top of the line for the US military, uh, you know, you reach out to a mile with this thing, kill deer at a mile. Well, we're gonna save that for another video, right? So I'm gonna get this out of the way. We're not gonna talk guns, we're not gonna talk optics. You have your gun, you have your, your deer hunting rifle, right? You already have that. Now let's master it. Okay, so to do that, you need to get the best ammo for accuracy. Not the best deer hunting ammo, not the best elk hunting ammo. I want you to get the best ammo for accuracy. Why? I appreciate you asking, right? Um, you've got all the different bullet designs, okay? Now, uh, they all have pros and cons. One, uh, one side is their accuracy level, and then the other side is... Uh, how much energy does it deliver on target? A lot of times dealing with hunting, they talk about penetration, but at the same time, you need to be able to deliver that energy. Now, are you actually trying to deliver energy to that animal, that mammal, or are you trying to cause trauma, right? Because basically that's what you're doing. This is a living thing, okay? Now, you got, I, I want you to note that because bow hunters, they don't rely on that shock, that uh, that energy hitting the target, they rely on expanding broadhead, broadheads, fixed broadheads to cause that trauma for them, right? Because And that's going to come into play depending on what kind of ammo you get. Now, you have your traditional soft point ammo. This has been around forever. You've got your little exposed lead tip, copper jacket, and the whole inside of it is filled with lead. This was the standard for the last hundred years. Uh, it mushrooms at the top, you get a little bit extra uh, wound channel, but th that's, that's basically, that's old ammo guys, that's old technology. If you bend that lead at the tip just a little bit and now that, that's like taking a, a bite out of that Nerf football, you throw it and it curves all over the place. The bullets have got to be perfectly concentric, right? So that, that's old hunting ammo, right? Now you get into your traditional Match King ammo, the, the top of the line accurate ammo. A lot of them will have a little small uh, hole in the tip. That's not to make it expand more. That's because the copper jacket is actually brought forward around the lead uh, and the, the opening's up actually up at the tip. It's not designed to expand, but this is designed to be insanely accurate ammo. It's great, great ammo and that is traditional match king ammo your amax bullets basically right your match bullets right then you you get into um more of your modern combat bullets your modern bullets that the snipers are running and it's still the same design it's shaped like a match king bullet uh, it's built for accuracy right but uh it's actually uh, and a lot of them have bonded cores so you're getting a thicker jacket and it is designed to only mushroom so much. And what this allows you to do is you get that penetration, right? Um, 
you're delivering the energy, but uh, the, still the primary focus is on accuracy. That's for military guys. Now remember, the military doesn't necessarily have to kill an enemy. If you wound an enemy, it now takes four other enemy soldiers to, to uh, carry them off the battlefield. Best ammo? Huh? Maybe not. Now you start getting into the very, very modern rounds. And what, you, what we're doing now is uh, the projectiles are actually a milled copper. They're, they're all one piece lead free. Right? Um, this, uh, the barns, you can actually zoom in on it. These are two different designs. Right? But you can see that it is just solid, solid copper and it does not have any lead in it at all. Now this one has the small ballistic tip on it, but uh, once it hits that ballistic tip, right, the, the copper actually drops away off the back. Great ammo, hits hard, you get maximum penetration. Uh, good ammo, good stuff. Now, and you can take that to the umpteenth level. Now there are, for those guys that like to hunt hogs, Again, this is uh, controlled expanding ammo. Again, think like those, um, think like those uh, bow hunters. This is actually made by Lehigh Defense. Uh, it's called um, Maximum Expansion. In this case, it's a 194 grain projectile. Now, uh, in 308, right? it's still available 6.5, everything else. Um, but it is actually, I don't know if you can see in the tip, it is actually cut down the sides like an expanding broadhead. When it hits, it opens up on, on contact with the animal. You're not getting a lot of deep penetration, but what you're doing is you're delivering all the energy right there to that, uh, right there to that animal, right? So um, try a couple different loads, uh, different types of ammo. Decide what do I need for that animal. Guys are worried about, I need, to, I need to have this maximum penetration. I need to have it. weight retention. Guys, your number one concern should be uh, accuracy. Now there's even frangible ammo, right? Uh, for short range shots, you want to deliver all that energy. That's fine. I, I don't recommend them for hunting. I really don't. Now, when you start looking at uh, matching the ammo to your gun, What's more important, damage versus shot, place, uh, shot placement? Do you want maximum trauma on that animal, hitting it anywhere, or, uh, or do you want an accurate shot, like right in the vitals, right in that heart? You know, traditionally, you aim small, miss small. If you can hit that heart, you're gonna drop the animal no matter what kind of ammo you're using. That's why I push first and foremost, you want the most accurate ammo that you can get. Now, when you get that accurate ammo, whatever brand you decide with, I'm not bashing one over another, when you get it, you need to match that ammo to your gun. So try different loads, right? Try different weights. Uh, for example, if you're running a 30 odd six, get three or four different kinds of bullets. Now, different bullet weights, different muzzle velocities, you'll find that one barrel on this uh, 30 odd six versus this heavy barrel on uh, this Seeking's Precision uh, 6.5, uh, different uh, twist rates, uh, different throats in it. They're, they're just some guns like different bullets uh, and different loads, different muzzle velocities, different than they do other ones. You could literally get, uh, all the same kind of ammo, but just vary the, uh, the weights in the projectiles just slight, and you'll see that one, uh, one type of ammo will shoot a two MOA group, two inches at 100 meters. You swap and change it just a little bit, and all of a sudden your gun is capable of sub-minute of angle shot groups, and you haven't changed anything on the gun at all. Right? And that's why they say uh, hand loaders uh, they, they've got the most accurate ammo. Why is that? Yes, a lot of it has to do with quality control and uh, the things that vary, but they're, allowed, they're able to vary each factor and tweak it. You can get down and um, those of you that haven't seen it before, thought about it, you have your, your case overall length, right? And what that does on your bullets, right? That bullet inside, now it has to be a certain length so that it can fit inside the magazine, 
right? But in general, rule of thumb when you're hand loading ammo is you want just a little bit of a jump. When you hit the, uh, the, the primer on the back, you want just a slight jump till it hits the lands and grooves inside your barrel. How much of a jump is that, right? Uh, there are some guns that if you vary that, that slight jump, that space there, uh, just that little bit will makes a gun more accurate. So if, if you're interested in getting into hand loading, guys, you can make very, very accurate gun, uh, ammo for your guns, right? So I've got a little bit more to talk about, but real quick, I'm gonna take a short commercial break. All right, guys, now once you get that ammo that you decide on, guys, you need to zero properly. Get the gun as stable as possible, get down behind it, and you need to zero it. Guys, you need to be right dead in the middle of that bullseye. If you've got a nice tight shot group and it's just a little bit, if it's a half inch to the left of center, you're like, well, most of my shots are in the X ring. Yeah, it's because you've got a two inch wide X ring, right? Uh, but you being a half an inch off of center, that's at 100 meters, that's now a whole inch at 200. It's a, um, it, and you see what I'm saying? It continues to double, right? One inch at 100 meters, two inches at 200 meters, three inches at 300 meters. That's how minute of angles work. Make sure you get that ultra accurate initial zero on that gun. But after that, I want you to do grouping drills, okay? Shoot shot groups. You know, if all you've done is you've shot one bullet, hey, I hit in the middle of the 10 ring, guys, shoot five shot groups and see what you're capable of. Because if you're shooting a two inch shot group at 100 meters, guys, that's a six inch wide shot group at 300 meters. Guys, that's bigger than the heart that you want on the animal, all right? So you shouldn't be shooting past that. But if you can shoot a quarter inch or a half inch shot group, at 100 meters, back at three, four, five, 600 meters, you're still shooting a group that's tight enough that you can take those long shots. Now, once you've got it down that you can actually shoot accurately, you got a gun that's accurate, you've got ammo that's accurate, you've uh, practiced with it, you bringing all these precision instruments together makes for an accurate uh, hunter, ac accurate sniper, but that's just part of the equation. Now we've got to deal with um, all the environmental conditions. For example, uh, just a ballistic trajectory of that bullet. Another word for that's bullet drop. All right, now you gotta remember, uh, gravity starts dragging that bullet down as soon as it leaves the bullet. So you zeroing at 100 meters, you, you've elevated the front of that barrel a little bit, okay? How high do you need to aim to have it hit at 200, at 300? See what I'm saying? Now, you could, just read off of the back of the box and go off the little, uh, little ballistic data table that is set in their perfect little factory uh, under perfect conditions at a set temperature, so many feet above sea level. I I'm here to tell you that's not accurate. It's not accurate at all. So what military snipers use is we use what's called ballistic software, right? Um, we'll run them in our phones. I personally like the, uh, program applied ballistics, all right? Now, when you put in the correct data, muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficients, uh, grain weight of the bullets, all that stuff, when you place all that data in there, guys, this is not just a phone, this is a handheld computer, all right? You put the correct data in, it's gonna give you the correct answer back. But again, it's not just having uh, the ballistic program, the ballistic software, it's not just about spending the money on the cool gadgets. You've got to be able to use it. You've got to practice with it because you're not going to have much time when that mammal comes out of hiding, right? So first and foremost, you need to, you need to have that range to the target, right? Uh, a good laser range finder. Uh, this one's made by SIG. I don't remember the exact model on it. The, uh, 2400 ABS, uh, Good for 2,400 yards on a reflective target, but honestly, you get about 1,200 meters out of it. This also has the applied ballistic software already built into this, so I, I can use it directly with this. You've got to know that exact distance. Now, after that, 
you, you've mastered that. You've, you've taken into account, uh, what, about, what about temperature, changes in barometric pressure, things like that. Because if you zero that gun at home, and then all of a sudden you go to that uh, hunting trip of a lifetime up in, uh, let's say, Alaska or somewhere like that, you've got drastic temperature changes. You know, a, a 20 degree drop in temperature can move that bullet uh, one minute of angle because the, the molecules of air are actually getting closer together, more drag on the bullet, the bullet's gonna slow down and drop. Guys, it's the same thing with changes in barometric pressure, changes in temperature, uh, changes in your elevation above sea level. The, uh, either those molecules in the air are closer to together or they're farther apart that in turn creates more drag on your bullet. And you need to have the ballistic software that will help you calculate that. Now, once you've got that, all right, now the next thing, what's the big thing that's gonna affect you on those long range shots? It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be the wind, right? You need to not just know how to hold for speeds, uh, but also for the distance, why? Because well, if it's a five mile an hour wind at 200 meters, that same five mile an hour wind at a 400 meter target is gonna drag on that bullet twice as long. So when you're calculating winds, you need to know the wind speed and the wind direction. Uh, direction, okay, because if it's coming completely perpendicular to you, you're aiming at the animal here, bullets coming straight from a 90 degrees, either nine o'clock or three o'clock, it's what we call a full value. Now, if it's coming in at 45 degrees, Everybody said, well, that's half value. It's not, it's actually still about 80% of the stress on the front of that bullet, right? If you get to about uh, 11 o'clock or one o'clock, that would be a half value wind call. So you can actually use your wind meters. In this case, this is my Kestrel. It's actually got uh, the Horus A-Track ballistic software built in it. You don't need all that. I just like backups to my backups. Uh, get a good wind meter, it gives you deadly accurate barometric pressure, temperature, all that stuff, but it'll also read the winds where you're at. Now, if the grass and the leaves are doing uh, the same thing they're doing down by your target and in between, remember, it's not the winds where you're at. It's not the winds where that animal is, it's the wind between you and the animal. So uh, wind meters are a great tool for you to have. They are there, uh, they add that extra a piece that little 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 extra bit of information so it's no longer unknown you're not just doing kentucky windage uh, for snipers to be able to shoot long distance our math has to be very very uh, precise guys uh reading winds that's a whole separate video all by itself all right now what about moving targets what about that deer that's on a run what uh don't take the shot well, wait a minute, Carl, you're supposed to be teaching us how to be better snipers here. Yeah, there's snipers get uh, math to the level where you can calculate the, uh, the mammal speed, direction, distance to him. Uh, yeah, you don't need to do that. Why? Because, well, because an animal, an elk, a deer, whatever it is, it can run a lot faster than a human can. And uh, now just don't waste, remember, we're talking about humane shots on uh, animals here. Right, so don't shoot, uh, don't shoot moving targets, guys. Now, when you're practicing, you need to do realistic shooting practice. Now, what do I, what do I mean by that? Now, everybody zeroes either uh, prone shooting off the ground or you shoot off of a shooting bench. You're, you think you're accurate, you're great, you're awesome, you shoot nice tight shot groups. Is that how you're actually gonna be shooting uh, come opening day? No, I, honest, I want you to ask yourself, how will you actually be shooting? Are you gonna be shooting off of a pair of uh, shooting sticks? Are you gonna be shooting off of a tripod? Does your blind have a big shooting table built into it? Chances are it doesn't. So you, what you need to do is you need to practice shooting from an actual stand, that actual tree stand, all right? Uh, you don't have to be in the woods, go to that local shooting area, uh, find a tree nearby and hang your stands on it. Get a telephone pole out there, hang your stands on it and shoot there because shooting off of a railing or shooting unsupported, either standing up or sitting in a tree stand is a lot different than actually sh uh, shooting prone or shooting off of a bench at your local uh, rifle range, right? So you need to be honest about that. You need to, uh, 
self-evaluate your own shooting skills. What shots are you capable of shooting? If you master your rifle, you've got good ammo, you practice shooting from these different positions, okay, you'll find where your limit is. Uh, from there, what is the size of the target you're aiming at? Right now, right there, having that, knowing what your limit is, guys, you've just mastered your rifle and you've just become a much better hunter. You're going to be hunting like a sniper. Anyways, that's all I got, guys. You got questions, leave them below and uh, y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.